What's up guys, it's Sean here and I'm super excited to give you guys my review of the Jown collaboration with New Balance on this 991 in the gray colorway. Today's video is sponsored by Hefalux. When it comes to sneakers, comfort is king. So when you buy a pair of shoes and find out they're uncomfortable, one of the easiest fixes is to swap out the insoles. So that's where Hefalux comes into play. If you check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box, you'll see they sell a variety of ETPU insoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you guys are curious to try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and take 15% off your entire purchase, and be sure to tell them I sent you. So this right here is the latest collaboration between Jound and New Balance, this time on the 991 Silhouette. Jound, for those who aren't familiar with them, is a Montreal-based design studio, and they've collaborated with New Balance in the past a handful of times already. But this is their first time collaborating on this made in UK 991 Silhouette, so safe to say New Balance fans worldwide were super excited and eager to get their hands on this one. So these released on Jown's website first on February 9th, and then it followed up with a worldwide release on February 17th. And the retail price for this shoe is 250 US dollars or 325 here in Canada, which is extremely high, but typical made in UK New Balance shoes are pretty extensive already here in North America. The official colorway for this shoe, while they're calling it gray on Jown's website, according to New Balance's website, it's cobblestone, covert green and black, and the style code for this shoe is M991JJA. So the New Balance 991 is a silhouette that debuted back in 2001. Meant to be sort of an evolution of the 990V2, which dropped a few years before that in 1998, the 991 in contrast had a bit more of a modern look to it with a more intricate looking design on the upper. And fast forward over 20 years later, the 991 is still extremely popular, especially over in Europe. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box. So this comes in this plain natural colored cardboard box. We have the New Balance branding on the very top in black. And then on the sides of the box, we have the Jound logo. So diving into the details of this shoe, starting things off with the toe box, you'll see this area here is covered in mesh. And while the nickname of the shoe is just gray, in real life, this has much more of a warm and beige tone to it. Right above this, we have the silver reflective 3M layer. And then overlaid on both sides of the toe box, we have these layers of suede, which in real life, the color is more of a dark brown with a hint of olive. Surrounding the front toe cap, here we have more of a flat suede. And like I mentioned earlier, this doesn't really look like gray to me. In real life, it's much more of a pale beige sort of tone. So this same suede covers the eyelets of the shoe. And then the top two eyelets are constructed out of a gray colored TPU. Beneath this on the mid panel, we have more of that suede. And stitched on top of this, we have the New Balance N logo, which is constructed out of a blacked out reflective 3M material. Beneath this, running down the bottom of the shoe, here we have more of that same suede. And then moving downwards, you can see we have another overlay of that brown olive colored suede. And then underneath this, wrapping around the top portion of the ankle collar area, we have more of that same mesh that we saw earlier on the toe box. Beneath this, wrapping around the bottom of the heel, we have more suede. And then we have this oval shaped cutout in the middle, revealing this Jown branding in the center. And then the very top of the heel is covered in another layer of silver reflective 3M. Beneath this, on the bottom of the heel, we have a translucent TPU heel clip, which gives you added structure and support for the back end of the shoe. And then as we turn our attention back to the front, so these shoes come with two different lace options. The standard default lace and the one that I like the most are a flat style lace done in this cream color. But if you're not feeling these laces and you want a bit more contrast, they also give you a secondary polyester black colored lace as well. Underneath this, so the tongue is primarily constructed out of that same mesh that we saw on the toe box. However, in the middle and towards the top, we have this reflective 3M overlay. And then here you can see we have the New Balance N logo, along with New Balance 991 embroidered across in black. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is lined in a black colored textile. And for 991s, this inner collar area is pretty lightly padded, especially when you compare it to other New Balance silhouettes. And then as far as the insoles go, so these come with their typical foam line insole. It's covered in a black colored textile on top and stamped on the heel, we have the Jown branding in white. So the upper of the 991 sits atop a full length absorbed foam midsole. So this midsole is painted in white on the forefoot and more of a darker cream color on the heel. And then you can also see we have visible absorb windows with this darker triangular overlay along with wrapping around both sides of the heel. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this is your traditional 991 outsole. 
So this is crafted out of a combination of black and gray colored rubber. We have this N-shaped traction pattern on the forefoot and New Balance branding in the center of the heel. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this 991. And for those wondering about sizing, so my foot measures as a true size 10 slightly on the wider side, and I wear typically a size 10 in 991s. However, I'm not sure if this is just a manufacturing inconsistency, but I found that for this specific pair, even though I got them in my typical size 10, they ran ever so slightly more wide foot friendly than some of my other 991s in my collection. So I feel like for most 991s, the toe box area specifically is quite narrow, and you can feel some of that pinching even if you go true to size. So long story short, sticking true to size, you should be okay for this model. But just to give you guys a point of comparison, if you've worn other New Balance shoes before, I usually go a half size down to a 9.5 in some other New Balance silhouettes like the 992, 993, 990 V3, V4, V5, and V6. And in comparison, I stick true to size or a size 10 in most of my 991s and some other made in UK models like the 1500, the 1530, along with some other New Balance silhouettes like the 2002R, the 1906 are all of these i go true to size normally with a size 10. moving on to the comfort so the 991 i'd say that it's decently comfortable but it's not near the top of my list when it comes to new balance at least when you look at the shape of this midsole you'll see the contrast between the heel and the forefoot it's quite a substantial drop so when i'm wearing these i feel like the forefoot area feels a bit more minimalistic there's not too much cushioning underfoot there whereas on the heel you can really feel that absorb cushioning underfoot so if you can get your sizing right for the 991s and avoid any pinching in the toe box, then I feel like it'll be fine for an everyday casual use shoe. It's just for personal preference, I prefer other silhouettes like the 2002R, 1906R, and 990V3s for example, over the 991. But don't get me wrong, you can definitely feel that absorbed foam underfoot. So again, just for walking around in these and for casual use, they're going to be perfectly fine. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship. So first off, material quality, I thought it was very, very solid. The quality of the materials on your typical made in UK New Balances are almost always top notch. And I was very impressed with the suede quality. This is more of a flatter suede, so it doesn't have that overly shaggy, long haired look. But even when you run your fingers across it, you can see the color changing on the materials. And it doesn't have a synthetic felt like feel whatsoever. And in terms of the build and the craftsmanship, Generally speaking, I thought it was pretty solid. I did have some minor stitch issues on this pair, and I think the way it was packaged, some of the areas of the shoe that come in contact with, for example, the box, the suede looked a little bit scuffed and a little bit worn in, but all in all, I'd say that they were pretty minor issues, nothing that was a true deal breaker, and nothing I would really look at the shoe and say, damn, New Balance really messed up. So overall, these were pretty in line with my expectations, so I came away feeling pretty happy when I got them in person. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up and I'll show you guys how these look. Overall, this shoe is what it is. If you guys have been following Jound, you know how their aesthetic typically is. It's very minimalistic, very clean, very simple. And that's what we've come to expect when they collaborate with New Balance. So I think the colorway of the shoe is very, very clean. And this shoe fits in perfectly with the rest of Jound and New Balance's portfolio. But if you're asking for my actual objective opinion, obviously part of the reason why this shoe is so sought after and why the resale prices for this shoe are pretty damn high is of course its association with Jound and of course the limited nature of this shoe. I don't want to be one of those guys, but the truth of the matter is if you slapped on this colorway on a general release shoe and it wasn't a Jound collaboration and it had no association with any other brand, I'm 99.99% .99 sure that this shoe would sit. That's not to say it's not a nice looking shoe, it's just the way that sneaker heads are, more often than not when they know it's collaboration, it's one of those things where FOMO kicks in and you'll just buy the shoe in anticipation that it's going to sell out and the resale prices are going to rise 
then letting them potentially sit, and then seeing them sell out, get FOMO, and then seeing how expensive they are on the secondary market. So I'm definitely guilty of that. I took an L on this shoe and I paid resale for this pair. So I'm definitely part of the problem. But long story short, where I'm going with this is it is a nice looking shoe, but it's really nothing groundbreaking, nothing we've never seen before. And if Jan and New Balance come back with the same shade of gray and release, for example, a 993, then I'm sure we're gonna see that same cycle repeat once again. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Jan and New Balance 991 in this gray or cobblestone colorway. What are your overall thoughts on the colorway of this shoe? How do you feel about these Jan collaborations? Do you honestly feel that they're really, really nice? Or do you agree with me and say that part of the draw is, of course, the limited nature of the shoe and the fact that it is a Jan collab? Either way, drop a comment down below and let's talk about this release. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully you enjoyed my honest thoughts. I know I was rambling a bit in this video, but I just want to always tell it like it is. So thank you all for your continued love and support and I'll catch you guys all back here in my next video.